Good morning. It's good to have you here with us this morning um, as we think about um, all that is going on. Um, I just need to give us a couple of notices. Hopefully you've received our email that um, tells you the services for the month of August. We are going to start um, having services in church. We will continue to record them so that we, can, we won't be able to unfortunately do it live, but we will record the service so that we can put it onto Facebook after the service is finished. So please um, do, if you can't make it, please do um, continue to watch the service online when you're ready to do so. But one thing I do have to mention that um, the Church of England, the rules and um, things have changed. The government has said that they strongly advise us to wear a mask in church. So I would please ask you, if you come to one of the services, could you please wear a mask? Unless, of course, you're under 11, who don't, they don't need to, or if for a medical reason or lip reading reasons, you um, are medically exempt from that. So otherwise, please do wear a mask as you come to church. And if you haven't received the email, please do give me a call and I'll make sure that you get that email, um, that, uh, get the, an email with all the services on there. So we're just going to start with one service each Sunday as we go through the month of August. There'll be two midweek ones as well on Thursdays um, so that we can get back into a path pattern and a rhythm for the services. And then come September when we know a little bit more about what the rules and regulations will be, then we will um, let you know and we'll uh, re-advise and rearrange services um, as the government and the Church of England allow us to. So there's a lot to, to think about. I pray that you would just be patient with us. We're kind of learning on the hoof as everyone else is and trying to do our best in, in what we're doing. Um, where as possible, we'll try to do some singing outside um, just because we can't sing inside yet. So um, we will give it a go where we can and where weather permits. And we're also working really hard on trying to find an alternative for the children so that the children can come and still have Sunday school. Um, right at the moment, we don't have the facilities, but we are working very hard to sort that out. So thank you for being patient with us. So I just ask us now to just take a moment of silence and then we'll begin our worship. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, to bring us to eternal life. So in a moment of quiet, let us allow the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and remind us of our sins. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for today. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nurture us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So if you're at home, we're going to have the words of the peace. If you're alone, I pray that the Lord's peace be with you. If you're with someone, please do give them a hug as we say the words of the peace. We are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So do offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace, peace. peace. <laughs> Virtual pieces. together singing our first hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded. song together which uh, does have some actions it's the song for God so loved the world which is from John chapter 3 verse 16 so in the New Testament Matthew Mark Luke John and chapter 3 verse 16 so we're going to sing this song together and then I'm going to get Bruce and Catherine who are here to come and give me a hand with our, our talk so we're going to sing for God so loved the world and if you are able and know the actions, please do join in. Kim might know the actions. <laughs> so it's, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him 
shall not die, but have eternal life. And then it goes into the, the chorus, and we use a little bit of sign language. So L is one finger on the forehand, so that's L is for the love that he has for me. Then the vowels are on the hand, so it's I is the middle bit. I am the reason he died on the tree. Then it's F is for forgiveness. It's the two fingers across. F is for forgiveness. So we wipe it away. And now I am free. And then E, so that's the vowel E. E is to enjoy being in his company. Now, I'm going to sing it. We're going to sing it through once. And then we're going to, Rosie is going to sing uh, the second first verse. And we're going to do it as a round. Just sing and join in as we go along. It will kind of make sense. So we're going to do, For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, and whoever we'll split it and we'll have half the church singing one bit and half the other church singing the other part and it will sound amazing so as i said that is from bruce and catherine can you remember from which book in the bible john brilliant chapter three verse 16 brilliant that is a great verse now i've got bruce and catherine if they come up now, I'm going to, uh, hopefully, you'll all have seen something. Can't have to you turn around from there. Keep your distance. That's it. Uh, on Facebook, I hope you've all cut your strip of paper uh, and divided it, folded it in half, and folded it so that it makes those four little sections that spell L, I, F, E, life. So we'll get you to, I'll explain what I want these for, what you're going to do. Now, the song that we've just sung, I learnt it nearly 20 blah, 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 plus years ago. And that was because my children, Edward and Sam, we went on a holiday club. And the person who wrote that song was leading the group. So they learnt that song very long ago. But the verse in the Bible was written even well, well before that. It was written, you, no, there's nobody, no, there's nobody here who's that old. It was a long, long time ago. And they, John, who wrote it, wrote it only a few years after Jesus was alive on this earth. So, L, we've said, L is for the, what was it? L is for the love. love. That's right. So, it tells us that we have that love for God. So, we're on your little, with these, at home, look, with these at home, on the L, I'll give Bruce and Catherine one of these. On the L, perhaps you might like to draw a heart to, that reminds us of love. Because God has got that amazing, amazing love for each one of us. So that's the L. That's what we've got there, the L, the love. And then the num I, which Catherine's got, the I, that is because... We're, God loves, it's me, that's why Jesus died on the tree. It's for us, everybody, as individuals. So what you might like to do on your square with the I 
is draw a little picture of your face. <laughs> so it's because my picture wouldn't go, so I put glasses on mine. So a little bit for the eye on that. And then, so because Jesus died for each one of us. And then the F, can you remember what was that for? Bruce has got the F. What was it for? Forgiveness, that's it. Freedom. So I know some people might like to draw some, like, handcuffs on theirs. What do you think? That would be it. something like that on the F. Or, and then, because forgiveness is about when we say sorry, isn't it? So it's good to be forgiven. And when we say sorry to God, he forgives us. And we get freedom, which is brilliant. And we don't have to feel guilty. When we've somebody said, oh, it's okay, I'll forgive you. It's like, oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? We've got that. We don't have to wait down when we say sorry. Now, and we don't have to feel guilty. And what was the E for? Enjoy. Enjoy. That's right. Enjoy being in God's company. You've got the E. Show the camera, the E. That's it. You've got the E. And that's, we've got freedom. So you might want to put a celebration on that, or you might put thumbs up, because we do enjoy, isn't it? So that is where we can enjoy. And that spells out the L-I-F-E. So on those, we could draw those little pictures on there, saying that. So I'm going to say, thank you, Eugene. I'm going to say a prayer. You can stay there. We'll just say, thank you, Heavenly Father, that in you we have real life. We're loved we're forgiven, and we can enjoy spending time with you. Amen. 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 Thank you. So, hopefully at home, you'll have these little strips of paper. I'll give you yours, Bruce and Catherine. There we go. And there's your one each. There we go. And you take those down back to the back there. Thank you so much for helping. That was brilliant. So, these, when you've filled them in, uh, as I say... The love, your little face, could do handcuffs, and just celebration on that life. And that's what we've got with God, and he gives us his Holy Spirit as well. So, have fun doing those. And now, I think it's another, we're going to carry on with our worship, and we're going to sing um, another song, which is, Jesus Be the Centre. All right, I'll get my guitar. So if you are able to stand at home or if you're comfortable sitting, we're going to sing Jesus Be the Centre. first reading is from Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 8, 
beginning at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. This is chapter 13, verses 31 to 33, and verses 44 to 52. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of God is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of God is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. 
May I speak now in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I can honestly say I don't think there's a better scripture for this time than the whole of Romans 8. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, and if you have not read it recently, I would encourage you to read the entire chapter. It shows the truth of what it means to live in the Spirit, to allow God to do in and through us some really amazing things with incredible promises. The beginning of the chapter tells us there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We no longer need to live according to the laws of the flesh that seek to destroy us, but we are set free to live by the laws of the Spirit so that we might be truly free. Verse 6 says, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. So we are not condemned, but we are set free. And in allowing him to govern us, we have life and peace. Another powerful promise comes in verse 11. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, have you ever stopped to think what that truly means? Because that is the truth in which we live. We read further in verses 14 to 17 that we are adopted into God's family. We are heirs and co-heirs with Christ. We have at our disposal all that God provided for Christ while he was here on earth. That is a bit mind-boggling. And if you ask me, it's exciting beyond measure if we could just tap in to just a bit of that. It, is, it then goes on to tell us that we must share in this present suffering because that through that we will share in future glory. In college, we often refer to this as the now and not yet. Living in the promises of God, but there is still so much more to come. Verses 18 to 25 then lead us to understand that there is an eager expectation, a groaning deep within us that is waiting for the fulfillment of the whole of God's promises, the redemption of our bodies, that we might be fully and completely adopted as God's children. We are heirs now, but we have only just begun to see what is in store for those who love him. That is just a, a, a small synopsis of the first 25 verses. And, but that is not the end. As these things are true, we still are in a time of now and not yet. And that leaves us sometimes in a place of suffering, either our, our own suffering in our lives or in the lives of the people we love or the tragedies we see in our world. That leads us to verse 26, which was from today's reading. There are times when we are at an utter loss for words. We become weak and there is nothing left with that within us, even enough to pray. There are times in our life when we feel that sure helplessness and there's no words to describe it. I can remember the first time I went to a developing country. I was 22, never been anywhere other than Europe. So I was traveling to the Philippines. And as I arrived, it just overwhelmed all of my senses in a way I never understood before. But there was one place in particular during my time there that left me that kind of speechless. It's a place called Smoky Mountain, just outside the city limits of Manila. It, I had overcome sleeping in an abandoned warehouse full of rats and cockroaches that flew at me that were the size of a small toy. Even every sense in me was overwhelmed. But when we made a visit to Smoky Mountain, I could not handle the emotions that were raised inside of me. First came the smell. Smoky Mountain is a, a garbage heap outside the city limits. With the heat and the humidity of the Philippines, you can imagine what the stench was like. It was so overpowering that it made us actually feel physically sick. But there was nothing compared to what I saw and learned with that group that day. The people who lived on the edges and within the mounds of that place, sifting through that rotten rubbish to try and find something that they could clean up and sell in order just to find food for the day. 
That was too much for me. Seeing that my, broke heart, my heart broke so severely, I couldn't speak the rest of the day. That is when our scripture today comes into being, times when we just don't have the words. But in those times, the Spirit does. The Spirit speaks and intercedes for us in words that we don't understand. Tom Wright says this, the church is not to be apart, the church is not to be apart from the pain of the world. Now we discover that God himself is not standing apart from the pain of the world and of the church, but comes to dwell in the middle of it, in the person and power of the Spirit. We need a sense to feel the pain in order for us to understand our world and our lives. Jesus did not promise to take us out of that pain. He showed us an example of how to get through it with the power of his spirit. He died on the cross and rose again in that same spirit. He knew pain beyond what we could ever think or imagine. He groaned on the cross, but he came back to life in his his redemption body and showed us what awaits us for all of eternity. So our promise is that we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. When I was speechless that day in the Philippines, I fell on my knees and wept when I got back to our place where we were staying. I didn't know what else to do, but I know that the Spirit of God was speaking for me. It was a prayer that goes beyond our human ability to pray, through the depths of despair and to the other side where there is hope. What is on the other side? Verse 28 tells us. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. He can take the most painful of times and help us to see the good in it. We can see that what is happening with us at the moment, yes, it has been tough, sometimes painful. Time, it has been a painful time, but we have learned so much and gained so much through it. And life, if we allow it, will change, hopefully, for the better. The Lord will make good out of the pain. Verse 31 asks us the question, what then shall we say in response to these things? And then it tells us the answer. If God is for us, who can be against us? God did not spare his son. What more can he give us? With his son, we have become heirs of the kingdom of God. Not only that, the, not only that, the scripture tells us that Jesus himself is interceding for us at the right hand of the Father with the Holy Spirit giving us the words when we don't have them. What more could we possibly ask for? I know that it, that is an overwhelming thought and sometimes a bit hard to fathom, but it's the truth in which we believe. We have all that we need in Christ, not to bypass the things in this life, but to help sustain us through them. And how do we end? If that was not, if that has not convinced you, one of the most reassuring, powerful scriptures in the Bible, I hope can reassure you. The end of this chapter, it says, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Or dare I say, lockdown. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to the slaughter. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither present, nor future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. We are his and he is ours and nothing and no one can take that away from us. So if you haven't done so, take some time to read through Romans chapter eight 
and allow the Lord to, to let these truths sink into, your, sink into your heart and allow him to be the one who guides you through. Amen. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, you have shown us what it means to live in the Spirit. You called upon your Father in your times of need. And when there was so much pain on the cross, you cried out. You have known our pain. You have walked it here on earth. Help us, Lord, to run to you when there are no more, more words to say. Help us to remember that we are not condemned, but we are forgiven. Help us to live a life according to your spirit that brings us life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for the countries now that are hardest hit with the number of cases rising and people dying. We pray for India, for Mexico, Brazil, Iran, and America. Lord, we pray that you would help them in their time of need. Give them grace, protection, and healing. We also pray for our own country that even though the numbers are going down, that you would help us as we go into a new phase of opening shops and meeting in places such as church again. Protect us and help us to help others. Lord, we ask that you would also come to the aid of those around the world who have come to the point where there are no more words to pray, where the pain is so deep and the groans of the heart are too much. Father, would you remind them that your spirit is with them and that he can intercede on their behalf. For those who don't know you, who don't yet know you, will you answer the cry of their heart in their time of need that they may come to know your saving grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are ill. We ask for your grace to touch their lives that they may know your healing touch. We lift to you now those who are on our hearts, and in a moment of silence, we lift their names to you, Lord. Father, we lift those to you whose names we have just placed. We pray for your healing and your grace. We lift to you those who have found themselves in a dark place and ask that you would bring them light. Because if you are for us, God, who can stand against us? And Father, we lift to you those who have lost loved ones in this last week. We pray you would continue to help them find your love and grace in the midst of their pain. We continue to remember Brian and Tony and Betty before you as they prepare for Sue's funeral and for all of those who mourn this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we go about our day today, help us to remember that you are, that in you we are more than conquerors, that whatever life throws at us, nothing in this world or in the next will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Thank you for your love that holds us, your spirit that guides us, and that Jesus is at your right hand, interceding for us at all times. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us say the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Kim.
Kim. We're going to sing a song of worship saying, I will offer up my life in spirit and truth. And saying, Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? So if you are able to, to stand at home, to join in, please do. That just leaves me with the final blessing and then we'll sing our final hymn. The God of peace you brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Down from lofty mountains.
exalting grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my saviour god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my saviour god to thee Proclaim. 